Hello everyone and welcome back to the OpenGL 3D game tutorial series. In this third episode we see how to draw our first triangle in OpenGL. In particular we will see what points of the space to use in order to render the triangle on the screen, how to use OpenGL objects like vertex array object and vertex buffer object in order to store correctly the vertices of our triangle, and in the end, we will see how OpenGL is able to perform the rendering of 2D or 3D scenes to a 2D screen by means of the so-called graphics pipeline. As always, we will face three main parts, requirements, design and implementation of all the necessary things to draw our first triangle. Let's start with the requirements. We need a C++ IDE, in this series we will use Visual Studio on Windows, Qt Creator on macOS and Linux. The target platforms are Windows, macOS and Linux. The target graphics API is OpenGL and last but not least, a bit of knowledge of C++ programming language is recommended. Now we can start the design part. As for spin, let's see what is a triangle. A triangle is simply a polygon composed by three vertices. The vertices are points placed in a space. But do we really know what is a vertex? As we have said, it's a point, and just for this fact, it has a position in this space. But when we deal with graphics APIs, in this case OpenGL, a vertex can be defined by more attributes. As we can see in the image, a vertex can be customized adding any kind of attribute, like position, color, texture, coordinates, and so on. For this fact, we can have more types of vertex. For example, we can have a vertex with only the position attribute, that we can call vertex pose, a vertex with position and color attributes, that we can call vertex pose color, and so on. Well, but where do we have to store those vertices of a certain type in order to render our triangle on the screen? We have to store them in a specific OpenGL object called Vertex Buffer Object. A Vertex Buffer Object, also known as VBO, represents a memory buffer placed on the memory of our graphics card that contains a list of N vertices of a specific type like the ones mentioned earlier. For example, we can have a vertex buffer that contains only vertices of type vertex pose, but it can contain vertices of other type, like vertex pose color. Let's see now how we can use the BBO for our triangle. Today, since the position attribute is enough to render our polygon on the screen, we will use the vertex pose type. In the image we can see the three vertices that compose our triangle with their relative 3D positions placed inside the VBO. We will discuss more in detail how to retrieve the values of those positions in few moments. At this point, how can we create and use the VBO concretely? Through the usage of specific OpenGL functions, like glgen buffers that allows us to create the VBO. GL bind buffer that allows us to bind the VBO in such a way we can use it for our purposes, and GL buffer data that allows us to put our list of vertices inside the VBO currently binded. We will see how to use these functions concretely in the implementation part. Good, but now we have to find a way to tell to the graphics API of what attributes our vertex type is composed. In OpenGL we can use the GL vertex attrib pointer function that allows us to specify all the necessary information to define the various attributes of our vertex type. Let's take again the VBO of our triangle. In order to define the position attribute we have to pass the following parameters. The index of attribute in this case we set 0 since it's the first attribute, the number of elements where we can set from a minimum of one element to a maximum of four elements, in this case we set 3 since our position is composed by the x, y and z values, 
the type of elements that specify the data type of each element in the array, normalized, here let's set false. The size of the vertex, that is the sum in bytes of all the attributes of our vertex. Today, since we deal with only the position attribute, we will have a size of 3 multiplied for the size of float, that is 4 bytes. In the last parameter, we have to indicate the offset in bytes from the first attribute, and since we are defining the first attribute, this offset is 0. Very well, there is only one other object to take care of, the vertex array object. In OpenGL, vertex array object allows to store all the information needed to supply vertex data. It stores references to vertex buffer object, in the buffer object, vertex attributes, and so on. This approach allows us to use all this data at once. To store the various data, we have to simply enclose all the functions mentioned previously, so GL bind buffer, GL buffer data, GL vertex attribute pointer, and so on, between GL bind vertex array, in which we pass as parameter the ID of the vertex array object in which we want to store the data, and GL bind vertex array in which we pass 0 as parameter. If we pass 0 to this function, we simply unbind the currently binded vertex array object. At the end, we can render an object on the screen, like our triangle, by using only two functions. Again, GL bind vertex array, for which we bind all the object information stored previously, so buffer and vertex attributes, and then we have the GL draw arrays function, for which we use all those binded data to render objects on the screen. At this point, we have all the necessary information to draw our triangle. But in which positions of the space should we place our vertices? Well, most of the time we deal with vertices placed in a 3D space. But graphics APIs need vertices transformed in screen space in order to process them and show the polygons on the screen. The transformation from 3D space to screen space is accomplished by using the vertex shader, but this is something that we will see in the next tutorials. For now, we will render our triangle by using vertices already transformed in screen space coordinates and we will place them inside our vertex buffer object. Good, but how to get such transformed vertices? As first thing, we have to understand what is the screen space. The screen space is a 2D space composed by two axes. The x-axis, that represents the width of the screen, and the y-axis, that instead represents the height of the screen. For each axis, the range of values goes from minus 1 to plus 1. In the x-axis, minus 1 represents the left side of the screen, instead plus 1, the right side. In the y-axis, minus 1 represents the bottom side of the screen, instead plus 1, the top side. With all this information, we can easily find out the positions in which to place the vertices of our triangle. Very well, we have understood the meaning of the values shown previously in the representation of the triangle vertex buffer object. There is nothing to do but call GL draw arrays function to render the triangle. But what happens once the draw function is called? A sequence of steps called graphics pipeline is executed, usually in parallel on the GPU. Let's take a look at high level to each step. We have the vertex processing step, where each vertex retrieved from the vertex buffer and so on, as defined by the VAO, is manipulated by a vertex shader, and optionally by other types of shader like geometry shader. Shaders will be deepened in the next tutorials. Then we have the primitive assembly step, where the vertices processed from the vertex shader are assembled to form primitives, in this case a triangle. Then we have the rasterization, where vector information composed of shapes 
or primitives are converted into raster images composed of pixels. For this step, a viewport should be set in order to render the raster image in a specific area of the screen. This can be done by using the GL viewport function. Then we have the fragment shader step, where a fragment shader processes each pixel of the raster image. As last step, we have the per sample processing, in which the pixel processed in the fragment shader should pass some tests, for example the scissor test, the stencil test, the depth test, the blending, the logical operation, bright mask, and so on. Based on these tests and operations, the pixel could be rendered, blended, or completely discarded. There are many other things to say about graphics pipeline, but we will deepen most of them along the series. If you have questions, doubts, or comments about this topic, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section of this video or in the Discord server. The link to the Discord server is available in the video description. Also, if you find these tutorials helpful, please consider to support their development on Patreon. Every single contribution makes the difference, regardless the amount. Very well, we have gathered all the necessary information to start the implementation. As first thing, let's go to the math folder and let's add a new header file called orect, in which to create a new class called orect. Orect would be used to handle the size of the viewport. At this point, let's add four integer attributes with height, left, and top, and let's initialize them at zero. In order to handle easily the various primitive types, let's define a new integer type and let's call it I32. I stands for integer, 32 means 32 bits. Now we can add various constructors. Please pay attention to not add a destructor here, since it's not used for any purpose. So let's add a default constructor, a constructor in which to pass width and height parameters. Another constructor in which to pass left, top, width and height parameters. and last constructor in which to pass a reference to another ORECT object. That's enough for now. 
At this point we can go to our graphics engine, hit our file and here we can start to add the set viewport method. Let's add as parameter the size of the viewport of type or rect. Well, let's implement it and let's use the GL viewport function. The next thing to do is to use set viewport in the all game constructor. Here we need the size of our viewport. Since we want to render our objects inside our window, we should use the size of our window as viewport. So let's go to all window class and let's add a new method called getInnerSize that allows us to retrieve an all-rect object with the inner area of our window. In order to implement it, we have to use the get client rect win32 function for Windows operating system. The implementations of Get Inner Window for X11 and Cocoa APIs are all available on GitHub. Cool! The next step to do is to pass the inner size to set viewport. Let's check if it works. And it works, even if we don't see yet the results of set viewport function. Very well, let's go ahead and let's add the all vertex array object class in graphics folder. As we have already seen in the introduction, a vertex array object acts as a collector for all the data related to the vertices, so for vertex buffer, vertex attributes, and so on. We will create this class in order to handle all those types of data. As first thing, let's create the constructor and the structor.
Let's start by implementing the constructor. Here, first of all, we have to include the GLED header file. Then we can create the vertex buffer by using the glgen buffers. Glgen buffers, as the name suggests, allows to generate multiple buffers by passing as parameters the number of buffers, in this case one, and the array in which to place the handles of all the generated buffers. Obviously, we define a new type in OpenRequisites file. In this case, we just add an attribute of type unsigned int, and let's call this attribute vertex buffer ed. Let's pass the pointer to the attribute with the end operator. Now it's the turn of the vertex array object. We can create a vertex array object in the same way of the vertex buffer, with the difference that now we use the glgen vertex arrays function. Once BAO is created, we have to bind it with GL bind vertex array. As we have already seen in the introduction, now it's the time to store all the data related to vertices inside the BAO. The first thing to do is to bind the buffer created previously as an array buffer with GL bind buffer. Now that we have defined the buffer referenced with vertex buffer ID as array buffer, we can place the vertices inside it with GL buffer data. The problem is that we are not currently passing any data related to vertices to the constructor of vertex array object class. Let's solve this issue by going in open requisites file and here let's add a structor called all vertex buffer data. Here let's define three attributes, avoid pointer to the list of vertices we want to use, the size in bytes of the vertex,
and the amount of vertices inside the list. That's all, let's add it as parameter of Overtex Array Object Constructor. At this point, let's pass the total size in bytes of the list. The pointer to the list and let's define this buffer data for static draw with the GL static draw flag. The only thing that remains to do is to define the vertex attribute. As we have seen previously, we have to define only the position attribute with an index of 0 in order to indicate that this is the first attribute. Let's set 3 as the amount of elements that compose this attribute, that are the x, y and z values. And then let's define the type of these elements as float. Let's set to false the normalized parameter for now. Then we have to set the size of the entire vertex. Let's use the one we get from the data parameter. And as last thing, we should set the offset from the first attribute. Since this is the first attribute, we set 0. In order to enable this attribute, we have to use the GL enable vertex attrib array, and we have to pass the index used previously, and so 0. Perfect. As last thing, we should delete all the VBO and VAO of the destructor of the vertex array object. Let's do this with GL delete buffers and GL delete vertex arrays functions. Very well, let's go to Graphics Engine class and let's add the create vertex array object method. This method should return a shared pointer to a or vertex array object instance. We use shared pointer since this object can be potentially shared among multiple classes. Then let's define the same parameters defined in the constructor of VAO class 
and so the vertex buffer structure. Pay attention here, since we are using multiple C++ files to handle graphics engine class like Win32, Cocoa and so on, it is possible that the automatic implementation fails to add the method inside the O graphics engine C++ file. Check carefully. At this point, in order to create a shared pointer, we can use the make shared function. Cool, let's go ahead and let's add the set vertex array object method in graphics engine class. This method allows to bind VAO to graphics pipeline in order to be used by the draw functions. The only thing we have to do is to call GL bind vertex array and pass the ID of our VAO. To do that, let's add a suitable method. We have nearly reached the end. Let's go to all game class and in onCreate method we can start to create the vertices list of our triangle. Let's set the values we have discussed previously. At this point, let's call the create vertex array object method of graphics engine. And let's pass the vertex buffer data.
So the vertice is least. The size of the vertex in this case is an array of three float values. And the amount of vertices that is always free. Let's retrieve the VAO by defining a new attribute in the OGAME class. Then, in onUpdate method, we have only to bind the BAO of our triangle to the graphics pipeline. What remains to do? Well, it remains only to send the draw command. So let's add a new method in graphics engine class and let's call it draw triangles. And we have to define as parameters the amount of vertices to render and an optional offset parameter. In the implementation, we have only to call the GL draw arrays method. Let's pass the GL triangles flag. That means we want to render from a VAO that contains a list of triangles composed by three vertices. And in the end, let's go to the all game class and let's call draw triangles. Let's simply pass three as amount of vertices and zero as offset. Let's see if it works. And it works. Obviously, we don't want to pass the size of the vertex buffer of our triangle in this way. Let's improve this a little bit by storing the vertex buffer data inside an attribute in the BAO class.
And then let's add two methods, get vertex buffer size and get vertex size. In conclusion, let's substitute the free with the get vertex buffer size method. That's all for now, folks. Today we have seen how to draw a triangle for the usage of vertex buffer, vertex attributes and vertex array object. In the next episode we will see how to create and use shaders in OpenGL. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thanks for watching.